You've probably noticed that in some photographs and paintings, parallel lines appear to meet somewhere off in the distance, which, depending on how you look at it, might seem perfectly natural or very, very strange. I'm Vijay, and this is the geometry of vision, in which we'll explore the mathematics through which we see the world around us. One of the nice things about teaching a virtual class is that our studio is full of picture planes and we can easily see the world from many different perspectives. It's a bit like what's happening in your own brain when you look out at the world in front of you, you're constantly taking two-dimensional snapshots of a three-dimensional world. But you may have noticed that each time you shift perspective, the picture plane in front of you changes in some fundamental ways. Squares stop looking so square. Angles might contract or expand. Lengths keep changing. And of course, parallel lines cease to appear parallel and, in fact, converge. But how on earth are we supposed to make sense of a geometry in which parallel lines converge and lengths and angles keep changing? Thankfully, we'll discover that our picture planes are governed by surprisingly elegant geometric properties. For example, suppose I'm looking down at my feet at this square tiled floor. And then if I look up slightly, the picture becomes quite a bit more interesting. Now, if I turn my head slightly, the picture changes significantly once again. There are no more parallel lines. But how does our brain know that these three images represent the same evenly spaced square tiling? So now we have three different perspective views of the same tiled floor. So here's a question. Which of these three perspective views do you think would be the easiest to draw? What I mean is, suppose you take a single tile from each of these three perspective views. Which one would be the easiest to recreate? Take a moment to pause and think. In each of the three cases, which tools would you need to recreate the full drawing from a single tile? First, let's decide which tools we'll need. With this first tile, we'll need to take careful measurements, so it'll be useful to have a compass. And of course, we'll need our straight edge and our pencil. Eventually, you can get the job done with your compass and straight edge, though it takes a bit of work. What about the second tiling? Here's one way of doing it. 
once again using a compass and straight edge. It makes sense to start by measuring out corners in the horizontal direction, like this. But now, what about the vertical lines? They no longer appear parallel, but instead converge to a single point. Artists call this a vanishing point, and mathematicians call it a point at infinity. Now, since all the vertical lines converge to the same vanishing point, we can connect the dots just like this. How can we find the next horizontal line, though? Take a moment to pause the video and try to draw it yourself. Did you figure out the trick? Here's a clue. Try drawing a diagonal line. Did you get it now? The diagonal line reveals the corner points of the next row of tiles. So to draw the next horizontal line, we simply need to connect those new corner points to each other. And there you go. We've extended the tiling once again using our compass and straight edge. What about the third tiling? Believe it or not, this one is easier than the first and second. In fact, all you need is a straight edge because you don't need to take a single measurement to recreate it, which means we have no need for the compass. And believe it or not, it's actually quite fast to draw this picture and even kind of fun. See if you can complete the third perspective view of the tiled floor. But don't worry. In the first lecture of the class, we're going to go through it together. And throughout the class, we'll have lots of exercises that require a pencil, paper, and straight edge. So we'll get many more chances to draw. As the course progresses, we'll situate perspective drawing in the framework of projective geometry. And we'll get familiar with the algebra of homogeneous coordinates. We'll also get to know a topological space known as the real projective plane, as well as the matrix group, which governs its transformations. Finally, we'll study the cross ratio, which is known as the fundamental invariant of projective geometry, because it stays the same even as you switch perspective. As a four week long elective, this class will nicely complement more standard classes in geometry and topology by giving hands on experience with important mathematical objects you'll meet in those classes. The course is also suitable for computer scientists, engineers, artists, and designers who are interested in computer vision, 3D animation, or even just understanding how perspective works. The only prerequisite is linear algebra, so I hope you'll come and join.